this will be a little bit different video than normal, but just been doing a lot of flying lately, testing out some of the firmware updates that I'm about to talk about. Um, and so I'll just usually throw my GoPro on, fly around for a little bit uh, after work in the evenings here, and again, do some testing. So let's dive in on uh, some of the updates that we've been working on, and then stay tuned till later. I also am gonna talk a little bit about the config tool. And of course, some of you were asking about that quick release hub. Uh, so I bought one and I'll give some thoughts of that uh, towards the end. So stick around. So I'm talking about the firmware updates, working on version 1.3 right now, that'll be in beta here hopefully soon. Paul and I have been doing a lot of testing um, on new battery measuring. So what that means is basically taking the telemetry that we get from the ESC and keeping track of it better, trying to get a better estimate of what the current charge and uh, more importantly, how much battery is left. So you guys know exactly how long you can fly, right? Everybody wants to know how long you can fly. So working on that, I'm gonna talk about the battery curve stuff here in a sec, but basically um, that's the main thing. Also just, you know, since it's Arduino, there's a lot of cool libraries that have been updated along the way. Um, also related to Arduino, there's the new Arduino IDE 2.0 that's in beta. So I've been testing that out. Looks like it's gonna work fine. Some of you that um, are new to Arduino might wanna just start with that at the beginning. And of course, if anybody is also contributing and wants to upgrade, I think it's safe to do so. Another big update in this uh, new version is gonna be the way that we're calling this track power function in the code. Um, so basically calling it more often to get snapshots of the current wattage that's being drawn, also voltage, so we can get a better idea of essentially the current that's going through the system and we can estimate how much is less. Um, but something that I noticed during some of these tests was we weren't getting the complete picture. So sometimes because the screen takes a little bit longer for whatever reason to update, we would miss that snapshot of the current power consumption, which is fine unless you're relying on that to happen every so often and then just adding it up, which is what we were doing before. So I've completely rewritten that function that is now gonna, whenever you call track power, get, have an idea of when it was last called. So it's kind of self-aware and essentially be able to just um, keep adding those points up for however long uh, between snapshots that has been. So we have a better idea and there's no gaps is what I'm trying to say on that. So um, that's also gonna help us again with overall determining how much battery we've used and how much battery is le left. On the config tool side, I uh, made a couple smaller changes. One is just gonna look a little bit better on mobile. Again, the mobile thing is kind of cool because you can actually plug in your you know, phone or tablet on Android directly into the controller and update settings through that config.openppg.com website. So now it looks a little bit better, functions a little bit better. Also on the actual code development side, we're now using automated building and deploying. So when you merge in your changes to the main branch, um, that's automatically gonna get pushed up and you don't have to worry about um, you know compiling all that code. So that's pretty cool. And it's also, I made sure it's compatible on all platforms, so Linux, Mac and then PC, you can do the building on the um, config tool. So like I said earlier, the uh, firmware is also gonna have a update for the battery curve. And so I thought I'd show you guys what I mean by that, if you aren't familiar with kind of how lithium ion batteries work. All right, so now let's talk about lithium ion battery, uh, state of charge or SOC measuring. What does that mean? It's basically how much battery or flight time do we have left? Some of you might know a little bit about this, but I think it's interesting to compare to a normal you know, internal combustion engine, you have a gas or fuel tank uh, that's just feeding it. And when that's dry and then all the gasoline is used up, then your engine stops. But for um, obviously for lithium ion batteries, it's a little bit different than just looking in your tank and seeing how much is left. So. Um, I already opened up this website, again, just kind of looking at Google for an example, but this is gonna be, uh, they say a typical discharge curve for this is a 2000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. Um, at OpenPPG, we use different cells a little bit, but generally you're gonna get the same type of curve um, with any of these batteries. So 
the important thing to look at here is basically how it's not linear, right? So for a normal um, gasoline paramotor, you would say like, okay, if I have a half a tank left, that means I can fly for you know just as long as I had flown, kind of at that bingo point where you have to turn around. But here we have these kind of weird curves at the beginning and at the end. And actually there's different 2.0, 1.0 C, that's just basically um, you know how much draw that you are pulling off the battery, so that it can even affect what the curve looks like. So if you're only pulling a little bit, you know you might show that you have a little bit higher voltage, which is um, kind of the opposite of a sag that you would get down here below. But essentially, it's still going to drop off a ton at the end. And so while you might think that you know you're 25% of the way through because your voltage or 50% even is pretty high, it's pretty flat right here. Really, you know, you only have probably 10% uh, left battery. And so that can be a little scary for pilots. So what we've been working on is um, vastly improving this by making the uh, parameter smarter uh, in a couple of ways, talking about the, the better capacity measuring already um, with that firmware. But also we're still gonna have to look at implementing uh, higher fidelity curves. So we've done a lot of testing on drawing batteries at different um, you know, kilowatts, for example, and testing it in flight. So that's what this is all basically doing. Um, I just wanted to show this because it's good to visualize the differences between higher um, battery pulling versus just kind of idling there. And when you're on the ground, um, you're not obviously going to see as much of a drop off in that battery. So, all right, just out here uh, waiting for the wind to die down. Temperature has been good lately here in Texas, but uh, the wind's been a little gnarly the last couple of days. So I haven't flown with this yet, but in the meantime, I figured I'd show you guys the up close uh, with the quick detach uh, prop hub mount from IRS PPG. We got no affiliation, but some of you were asking how it fits and everything. So I figured I'd show you. Um, basically, as you can see here, it's on the tri-prop of my SP140. Um, so this is, uh, I guess, all counterbalanced. So hopefully no vibrations. Um, we'll spin it up later. Just put it on though. And here's from the side. It does add a little bit of uh, extra spacing here. Basically the width of my finger, as you can see with the way that the mount is built. And I'll take this off in a second to show you. But that's obviously okay. Just adds a little bit more room here um, away from the outer ring of the cage. So here, let's just uh, see if I can put this on here. Basically all you have to do, pull this out. This unscrews so you can tighten it down if you want more, but basically just unscrews all the way off. So it takes quite a few turns, uh, but no tools required, which is nice. So that's basically just this plate on here that uh, tightens it down. And then with the tri-prop especially, I think it's a little extra tricky because um, you do have to line all these holes up. But you can see that's what that um, you know base of the unit looks like. So I'll put this back on before I move these around too much. Um, it looks like I already have. Okay. That just slides on there. And then same way you took it off, this will just screw in. So it makes it definitely easier for transporting. Uh, again, not having to use any tools is certainly nice. But you do still have to kind of finagle it a little bit to get the props aligned. And you kind of want to do it until it's relatively snug here. And then um, this will just kind of clamp down and it should basically be it. So that's all it takes. Um, yeah, just wanted to show you guys this part. We'll do another little demo with it on and see how the vibrations are. All right, so I think it's gonna be too windy today to fly. So I figured I would just test it out in my backyard here. And um, just again, kind of see how it feels on my back. I don't assume there's gonna be much of a difference if it's properly balanced. But uh, we'll just test that here. Uh, I got the new firmware 
on in here as well, by the way. So, it's on sport mode. I have a bunch of it. power uh, comfort harness we really don't feel that many vibrations anyways and it's been a while since I've done just a full ground test where I'm looking for it but it seems pretty good overall I'll have to look back at the um, film here and see if I notice anything but let's head back inside and talk about a couple more updates all right well back inside here and it turns out it was still too windy the last couple of days to fly so haven't uh, done much more in the air, but since it had been a while, I figured I'd just do another video update for some of you that had been asking. Um, yeah, just kind of about what I've been up to here with OpenPPG. Of course, um, a lot of good discussions happening on the community forum, so feel free to come hang out with us there. And until next time, I'll see you.